Hey cats, Ed Budd here. Today I've got a shoe review for you from the brand who are one degree beyond. 361 degrees. I've got a highly cushioned road shoe here called the Centauri. It's chock full of squishy ETPU foam here in the midsole. Will this shoe make me feel like I've been propelled into a new universe? Let's find out. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't done so yet, please help us out to reach a billion subscribers by clicking that button down below and also giving this video a thumbs up like it really does help out. You know it makes sense. Also, if you want to help the channel out on a more ad hoc basis, you can drop us a super thanks. Perhaps if you've got a burning question that you want me to answer ASAP. There's a whole host of merch available too, including this very fetching Earth Credits mug. 361 have sent this shoe over to me for review, but they're not vetting my views before my valued viewers get to see them. We got the heel stack and forefoot stack on screen right now for my UK size 11, US size 12. For my size, we've got approximately 331 grams here, which is about four grams less than a Pegasus 40. It's about 11.7 ounces if that's your thing. And we have a UK price tag of 120 smackaroonies. I'm reading the sample size here has got about 31 millimeters in the heel, so it all adds up pretty much. Four foot width of 11.8 centimeters here. And in the heel, we've got 9.3. I get a sure durometer score of about 27 for this shoe. That makes it about the same softness as the Flight Foam Blast Plus material that we find in ASIC shoes recently. The average is about 28, so this is just below average in terms of firmness. Now, the insole included within this shoe is an Ortholite model, and you get about six millimeters of snack just on that alone. Okay. Hey, that's all the stats let's get into the upper first upper wise a somewhat generous toe box here for those needing some more space perhaps with a wider toe splay and the materials are quite soft yet reasonably plush here for a daily shoe certainly quite flexible but a little bit warm well you know Wearing a sandal is warm in the weather we have here in the UK at the moment, but you can have it both ways, can you? If you want that padding there, it is here. Slightly more plush daily offering. The ankle collar and the heel flare here do remind me of Nike's Pegasus 35 from a few years back. I think they could probably remove this flare here though. It's adding on some extra weight and I just don't really feel it serves much purpose. There is a lot of padding and cushioning back here in the heel, so if you require that, perhaps you've had an injury or something before and you your heel or you want some protection for that Achilles it is here. Functional and cushioned it really does help to hold the heel in place and does aid in the lockdown. The laces in the 361 Centauri are a touch thicker than most. Reasonable lace length here I have had to use a runner's knot with this shoe to really feel like I'm latched atop of that midsole. I think if you want the benefits of that shoe, you really need to get a good lock. The tongue does feature some specific sections around the top, which have some additional padding, though I do find the tongue a little bit too short. When using a runner's knot, I found that it was pretty much right at the end of the tongue. I could have done with an extra millimeter or so of length. There's very few misfires, but I just feel they could have put a little bit more length there to the tongue. The lace loop on the tongue there does a reasonable job of holding the tongue where it is, but I did get a slight bit of tongue slide on my second run. Now, the temperatures in the UK have been very hot recently. I did measure 30 degrees here in the studio a few days back. The Centauri has proved to be reasonably breathable, though. I have gone for some thinner socks when using this one. I think most people will find it a pretty good balance between plushness and sort of flexibility and breathability of the materials. I don't think the upper is going to be for everybody. I'm okay with it. Well, I'm cinching the laces up quite a lot. You need to spend some time here to dial in the fit. Some people though, if they have a narrow foot, they're gonna end up with the materials meeting pretty much in the middle. Almost feels like it should be classed as a wide shoe. I could probably get away with one that's a little bit narrower. I'll give it a 2.4 out of three for the upper so far. No problems really with comfort or anything, but it just could fit my foot a little better. Midsole now. 
I've got to say the midsole is very forgiving underfoot here from 361. That ETPU material is very soft, very compressive, and similar to the squashier float ride energy foam that we've seen. You know, there's a little dab of endorphin speed and pro in there. It certainly gave me some Energy 5 and Energy X vibes from Reebok. In fact, this is very close to the Energy X. So if you enjoyed that shoe, but you didn't really want the plate in that sort of mid to forefoot area, then this one's a good one to go for. And also it has some vibes of the Triumph 12. 21, a shoe I've really enjoyed utilizing from Saucony. There's a real similarity in the midsole squash between those two shoes. Weight is nimble and versatile enough that I'd suggest heavier heel strikers may find the drop of the shoe a bit too high. I felt like I wanted to land on the mid to forefoot in this shoe. When I did land on the heel, it does feel like I'm kind of squashing into the back. The engaged material, though, does feel quite resilient, does provide some propulsion underfoot if you do want to turn the pace up a little, but it certainly feels like a shoe I want to run in sort of recovery or daily paces rather than anything faster than that. Now, it could cause people to run in a way that's perhaps not normal to them. I've been using a lot of shoes recently that are between a 5 and an 8 millimeter drop. This one's probably a little bit closer to something like a 10 mil drop, and I could really feel it on foot. The engaged foam that we've got underfoot here is way more compressive than it actually appears and that thicker ortholite insole really does add a whole new level of squash. It's certainly more compressive I suppose than something like the Nimbus 25. That's firmer and more controlled. This does have a little bit of spring to it certainly in the heel. Wouldn't suggest it's actually that apparent in the mid to forefoot. So that does kind of pigeonhole this one into a sort of slower category for me. Could be an excellent daily trainer, perhaps for those heavier built runners. They want something that's lighter than an ultra boost, but still has that resilience. I think my bean pole like frame doesn't perhaps get the best out of this shoe. There's a lot of very resilient and lively foam here that I feel some perhaps heavier built runners can enjoy more. And of course it has that wider last that's probably going to accommodate a slightly larger foot type. The drop will certainly suit some people that are very very familiar with perhaps a Mizuno or Brooks shoe. It does demand a little bit of control of your ankle, I think, if you're going to get the best out of it. And perhaps mid to four foot strikers who like shoes that are between about five to eight mil. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. So perhaps a little bit too much bulk and midsole here to facilitate those faster miles. I just enjoyed this one really at cruising pace. It's more a daily mile eliminator. I think one suggestion would be to actually remove the strobel sock that we've got here in the shoe. It does almost nerf the forgiving cushioned qualities, perhaps adopting something similar to the Invincible Run 1 and 2, where they just had a partial strobel sock kind of on top of the midsole that enabled the cushion and squash of the foam to be fully realized. I can see it working for a whole bunch of people though. I'll give it a 2.6 out of 3 for midsole so far. Outsole now. So outsole wise, it's a very simple affair. There's one main rubber section here, which is kind of stuck together and two smaller pieces back here in the heel. Lots of rubber coverage right at the back of the heel, which some people will really, really be interested. That's no doubt going to improve the durability and longevity of the Centauri. This rubber is made of a high abrasion formula and it does sit on top of the midsole foam rather than being recessed into it. That landing area creates a nice thwack when you hit the floor, though I have found this shoe to be one of the more quiet models actually that I've used recently. There's a few times I've had to shout to passers-by or someone that I'm coming up towards to inform them of my presence. They just simply haven't heard me in this one. I would stress against using this one in some debris laden routes because you've got quite a lot of exposed midsole here. I started to take a pounding a little bit already. I would avoid anywhere with gravel or rocks. The engaged midsole is pretty durable, but I'd just avoid those areas just to be on the safe side. I'm finding the rubber to be pretty tactile and very consistent across the outsole. Creates a nice smooth transition from heel to toe and grips very, very good. Only time will tell if this rubber application lasts as long as some of the other competitors. As such, I'm gonna give it a bit of a stay of execution before before I give it a sort of full mark. Great on turns and cornering, and it works very well as its sort of intended use, I suppose, which is on road and pavement. It appears just as usable as any other road shoe right now. I'll give it a 2.5 out of 3 after my initial outings. Only lowered perhaps by the sheer amount of rubber here. It is quite thick. I'm not entirely sure you need this much on a road shoe. I guess it's more the depth of some areas. It just seems slight overkill to me. And also that exposed midsole could be 
at risk of the elements value now. So value wise, I feel this one actually fits in in a really nice place around about 120 earth credits. Light enough for most people to use as a daily option, though if you're a heavier set runner it could really really do the business. There's some good quality across the board here, it certainly feels good out of the box, it didn't feel like I had to break the shoe in. No major worries about durability of that midsole foam as of yet, certainly on the side walls, doesn't seem like there's a risk of tearing up those pellets. Some of the other TPU formula pellet based midsoles do seem to actually tear quite easily this stuff's closer to packing foam really a little bit like that power run plus stuff i can see some people getting some serious miles out of this one and all in all it's a pretty good quality offering the upper perhaps makes the shoe less of an option for some people if you're perhaps living in a warmer very sort of humid climate it is that bit thicker there and there are some thinner sort of more flexible options that could be better for you the Symmetros 2 for example from Reebok is much more breathable a touch lighter as well than the centauri but if you need a little bit more midsole stack then the 361 shoe might be a better option that said not everybody wants to drop 170 pounds on something like the nimbus 25 or perhaps even round about the same price for the invincible run 3 from nike i think the centauri will tick quite a few boxes for a range of runners if you want to try something a little bit different perhaps than a pegasus 40 by the way this one's a little bit lighter than that new nike Nike shoe and it's only slightly more cash too which are all good things i'll give it a 2.5 out of 3 for value purely lowered by the versatility of the shoe there's just a little bit too much shoe here in the upper for me so that gives us a 10.1 out of 12 overall after my initial runs for the 361 centauri Have you tried out any shoes from one degree beyond or 361 degrees? I'm keen to see what they'll do to this one perhaps in future versions, whether they'll carve a little bit of that midsole material out here perhaps to increase the flexibility. It would be great as well if they'd have a shoe that's slightly more contoured here for my foot at least in the upper. And certainly the qualities there from the outsole to that very cushioned insole. It has to be said it does offer a very cushioned ride for not a lot of weight. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down in the comments a very quick musical interlude for you today it comes from the sleepy jackson with their mini album the sleepy jackson i think this came out about 21 years ago now but still sounds absolutely fantastic a slight psychedelic very odd vibe about this one interesting songwriting too and some really odd vocal deliveries that are strangely alluring tracks to check out are the awesome good dances and mini skirt mini skirt sounds like some sort of weird warped country track there's some really nice pedal steel on there some really great guitar playing as well there's a lot of music that i really like that comes out of australia and this is one such band go and check them out i'm not sure what happened to them after that sort of seemed to disappear into nothingness the sleepy jackson with the sleepy jackson thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed today's review if you're enjoying the content on the channel hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up like it really does help out my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you